Brothers and sisters in Islam, last week we had our conference here at the masjid. And alhamdulillah, we had a guest speaker who gave a very powerful khutbah. Now this is a tough act to follow, but this week I wish for us to reflect on some of the points that that Imam shared with this community. One of the main points was that we as Muslims, we are the ones who represent the religion of Islam. We are the ones that pass on this great message to people around us. People judge the religion based upon our actions, not based upon the pamphlets, not even the Qur'an itself, very few people open up the Qur'an and read. All they need to see is, is my neighbor who is a Muslim a good person or not? And we've discussed this point many times in many khutbas and many lectures. And it comes back time and time again. If you look at the religion as a whole, the things that bring you closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the way that you interact with people. People often ask, and they ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what will bring me closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What will ultimately help me enter Jannah? And we've dedicated a whole khutbah in the past on that one topic. But today I want to emphasize even more that the way of a Muslim is shown in the way that they interact with people. In Islam, the concept of Rahbaniyyah being a monk, it is haram. 
It is considered to be an innovation, meaning to seclude yourself, to remove yourself from people, and to say to yourself, I'm going to only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a remote place up on a mountain. This is not Islam. Islam is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. It is to interact with people, interact with those who accept the message of Islam and interact with those who do not accept the message of Islam. And you will see in the lives of the companions <coughs> that they understood this. Not only did they understand it, but they implemented it. You have the Prophet ﷺ asking his companions. He was sitting with his companions and he asked them. He said, Who from amongst you today woke up fasting? Meaning that you made the intention and you're fasting right now. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, I am. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked another question. فَمَنْ تَبِعَ مِنْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ janaza. Who from amongst you has followed a janaza today? And again Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, I am. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked again, فَمَنْ أَطْعَمَ مِنْكُمُ الْيَوْمُ مِسْكِينًا Who from amongst you has fed a poor person today? And again, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, I have. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَمَنْ عَادَ مِنْكُمُ الْيَوْمَ مَرِيضًا Who from amongst you have visited a sick person today? And again, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, I have. And at the end of the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that these qualities are not found in an individual, in a person, except that they enter Jannah. Except that they enter Jannah. Let us pause for a moment. These four points that the Prophet ﷺ was asking about. How many of those four points benefited Abu Bakr and only Abu Bakr. It was only the fasting. Whereas all the other points, it benefited society, the community. Abu Bakr was there when they needed help to bury someone else. Abu Bakr Siddiq was there when someone was sick and no one else would visit. Abu Bakr Siddiq was there when the poor needed to be fed. And again, this is the whole religion. The religion is not just being inside the masjid. Yes, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they spent a great time inside the masjid in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they also understood that the greater responsibility lies beyond the masjid. The people that are inside the masjid, alhamdulillah, those people are at least coming to the masjid. But how many people are out there in the community? Myself as an imam, I encounter people in the city that tell me I have not been to the masjid for so many years. Where are these people? Many of them left because they had a bad experience at the masjid. We are the ones to blame. We, we should stop pointing fingers at other people. If people have a bad perception of the masjid, it is our responsibility to change it. Not only the imam, not only the management of the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask each and every individual, what did you do? And again, if you look throughout the religion, you see all the teachings that the Prophet ﷺ taught, they all focus on the well-being of the community. 
أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد From amongst the most basic things that we're taught in the religion is the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ teaches us that each Muslim has a right on another. The Prophet ﷺ said, Haqqul Muslim al Muslim sit. That the rights of a Muslim on another Muslim are six. Six points that the Prophet ﷺ Specify each point bringing a benefit, and these are first. The first point is if a Muslim meets another Muslim and that Muslim gives the other Muslim salam, it becomes wajib, it becomes a must to respond back. And again. It doesn't take a lot of intellect to understand the purpose behind it. Imagine if someone gives another person salam and the person doesn't respond back. It will have a negative effect on that individual. And shaytan will use that against the people. So the first point is when someone, a Muslim, gives salam to another Muslim, it is your Islamic, your Muslim duty to respond. And if you don't, then you become sinful in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> the second point the Prophet sallallahu mentioned is ijabat al dawah That if someone invites you, even for something as simple as a cup of coffee, they say, come, let's go, let's sit somewhere. I invite you to my home. Unless you have a valid reason, it is against someone to your home, to your house. You tell that person, please come, I prepared food for you. And the person says no. And they don't have a legitimate excuse. It will have a bad effect on that person. Another point that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was that if a person sneezes, that you make dua for them. As long as that person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they say, Alhamdulillah, and then you make dua for that person. The following point that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned was visiting the sick. How often do we hear about someone being sick? And we don't even do the most basic of things. In our hectic lives, it is difficult for us to go and visit someone. But if you can't, at least send, send a text message, send an email, give the person a phone call, or at the very, very least, once the person gets well again, ask them about their health. This is a Muslim responsibility. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the janazah. Following the janazah is a collective responsibility. If no one takes on that responsibility, the whole community becomes sinful in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we participate and we help in the janazah, we do so hoping for the, for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also that when the time comes and we find ourselves in that situation, that we pass away, we hope that our brothers and sisters will step up 
that we ourselves will not be neglected. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the final point. That when your brother or your sister in Islam, when they ask you for advice, sincere advice, you have to give them sincere advice. It is your Islamic responsibility. Too often someone comes to you and they ask you for advice and you just give them something from the top of your head. Advice that you yourself would not accept. And this is not what the religion teaches us. And to conclude, brothers and sisters, if you think about these six points, each and every point has a positive effect on the community if they're implemented in the correct way. And this is the whole religion in a nutshell. Again, Islam is not about just worshipping Allah and forgetting the people. Islam is about worshipping Allah by helping the people, by service, servicing the people, by being there for the people. That's why you hear in so many ahadith time and time again, the Prophet ﷺ telling us that the person has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they don't thank the people. The two go hand in hand. Too often do we focus on just our own worship, our own fasting, our own reciting of the Quran. That is why you see people, mashaAllah, when it comes to Salah, they pray and they pray and they pray. Because if I go to Jannah, that is what matters. I don't care about people around me. But when their call comes to feed the poor, to volunteer, to help, many people, they shy away. Many people don't step up. And we need to change that. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين ورحم موتانا وموت المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة